1848, Muscatine County's first European-American permanent settler, Benjamin Nye, built this structure, the Pine Creek Grist Mill. It stands today as one of the most pristine examples of 19th century mills in the entire country. Well, that's what makes this mill unique, is of those 500 grist mills that existed in the 1870s, this is one of the lone survivors. There's only like 10 or 15 mill buildings still standing in Iowa. This is the only one that has all of its machinery intact and actually functions. Unfortunately, Benjamin Nye didn't enjoy his success for very long. He was killed in a confrontation with the son-in-law, who years earlier had eloped with his 15-year-old daughter. After Nye's death, the mill passed through many hands and challenges. It remains the centerpiece of Wildcat Den State Park, nestled along the Mississippi River, north of Muscatine. Part relic, part museum, the grist mill is a living, breathing, chugging trip back in time. When Benjamin and I first built this mill 150 years ago, Iowa was a fledgling state. The structure has weathered historic flooding, the endless encroachment of a natural environment, and the threat of fire, which has doomed thousands of similar structures over the past century. In 1883, floodwaters nearly doomed the mill, blasting away a sidewall and scattering bags of flour all the way to the Mississippi River. 110 years later, Iowa's historic floods of 1993 nearly toppled the grist mill again, but it still stands. How has this structure survived? A little luck and tremendous effort from a volunteer army, the friends of the Pine Creek Grist Mill. Somewhat over 50,000 hours of volunteer help went into this project. It could be people working on restoration, could be people like our treasurer, our secretary, uh, interpretive people. We'd been told by the experts that the mill was beyond restoration, that it could not, the machinery could not be made to run and it was impossible. And not being experts or knowing how to do this, we went ahead and did it anyway. Preservation is one task. Renovating a 150-year-old mill into pristine working order is an entirely different task. Volunteers have tediously repaired belts, shafts, and anything else requiring a tune-up after a century and a half of cornmeal and elbow grease. And that's the flour from the millstones. It's not quite whole wheat, not quite pure white. A lot of the technology has been lost so what we've had to do is recreate it. You know, uh, one of our biggest issues is power transmission. You know, because this place is powered by flat belts and wooden pulleys and steel line shafts, and that's a technology which disappeared over a century ago in America. So you have to rediscover all the little subtle tricks that are involved in it. And you have to rediscover how people adjusted these machines and how they spliced belts. And uh, you have to document it all so that once you gain that knowledge, it's not lost. This is the corn grinding part of the mill, where millers take the corn, throw it into a hole, which sends the corn downstairs into the sheller. Once the corn is shelled, the kernels come here to the roller mill, where it gets ground up, gets sent upstairs for the next part of the journey. Upstairs, the ground corn is run through a bolter, which sifts it, and then sends it back down here, where it comes out as cornmeal. You get together and you decide which is the best way, you try it. If it doesn't work, you go to plan B and maybe plan C. But uh, we usually end up making them work. And uh, it's really kind of neat to see the end result when you can see something working that hasn't worked for many, many years. In the late 1800s, the Wrought Iron Bridge Company of Canton, Ohio, was well known for a design known as the pin-connected Pratt-through truss. And while that structure type was once common in Iowa, this Pine Mill Bridge is the only remaining site in our state where the relationship of original mill and bridge is preserved. Wildcat Den State Park is a lot more than historic structures. Trails encompass a wide swath of the park. Hikers can experience spectacular views and a variety of terrains on trails such as Steamboat Rock and Fat Man Squeaks. From a leisurely stroll through the valleys of Wildcat Den to the hillsides above, this eastern Iowa gem 
may be off the beaten path, but it's a journey worth taking on the trails or back in time. And definitely, we all feel pride in the fact that we have this thing back and working again. I, I was just thinking of what my wife said one time for Heritage Day. And all the windows and the doors were open, and she looked up at that and said, you know, the mill is smiling again. So that, that's kind of neat.